When I tell y'all there is always a scheme, a plot twist on the Real Housewives of Potomac, baby, there is always something, okay? And y'all not going to believe this one because I can barely believe it. I don't want to believe it, but I believe it because I'm because of who telling us, okay? So let's get into the Mia and the Gordon of it all. So we have heard through multiple sources. It's also been confirmed. Well, first via TV Deets. Then um, I did some of my own research. Then People Magazine confirmed it as well. And so we know that Mia and Gordon are separated. But when did the cast know? Let's get into it. Because our friends over at Queens of Bravo happened to pick up something from the Right Answers Mostly podcast, where Candace had sat down and she talked a bit about Mia and G and their separation. So she only found out last month. This is what she had to say. And the headline basically says it all. It says, Candace reveals that before the news began to spill about Gordon and Mia split, Gordon gave Chris and Eddie a heads up in an attempt to get Candace and Wendy to come after Mia. Now, that is very much giving Ralph and Cousin Courtney, okay? Because was it not Ralph who allegedly fed information to Cousin Courtney for her to then use against Drew? So Candace basically reveals that throughout the season, she did not know about this Gordon and Mia situation. If Mia was talking about it, she was not talking about it necessarily with her. And she said that her and Mia, you know, they did spend time together. She also says that Mia spends her time, or at least maybe, I guess, was filming more uh, with people that she was trying to put her head up their behinds. And um, I don't know if she was referring to necessarily Giselle or maybe the new girl. I'm not really quite sure exactly who she was referring to because she doesn't really go there. But what she does say is that around about a month ago, you know, I guess she alleges that Gordon had either text and then called both Chris and Eddie um, to let them know that he was leaving Mia. OK, he said that he was leaving her. And he said that he wanted to give, I guess, either them the information or give, you know, uh, Wendy and Candace information or the tea, okay, about the whole situation. So for Candace, she's like, well, listen, you know, I will get in a lot of ish, but I definitely do not want to get involved in somebody else's marriage because I don't want that kind of karma. So, listen, you know, the other day I was like, man, I hope this news ain't true. You know what I'm saying? But even more so now, I feel like I really just don't like the idea of like, I think it's one thing to be going through a situation in your marriage. And I think it's a completely different thing to then feed information to you know, other people so that they could potentially use it on the show as is being alleged here. Um, I just feel like, you know, I would, I could only imagine that divorce or separation is hard enough that then you don't begin to add in, you know, other people to, you know, and, and give away private information about your partner to other people who may be in an adversarial position to your former spouse or to your spouse who you were separated from, because that is just going to get ultra messy. I can't, I can't even like, I just feel like we have to have a, like, there has to be some code these days with like, you get into a relationship, things go bad. And like, you don't go into the mud and try to destroy the other person with whatever information you know. I believe that to be true in friendships, and I also believe that to be true in relationships. I don't care what happened. I don't care what the falling out was. 
you know, for me, it's a G code type situation. I ain't even doing that. You know, if I feel like, you know, there is something that I feel like you did to me and it's that bad, I feel like your karma will be bad enough or like the life will life will hand you whatever you need to be handed as a result of whatever you did or maybe nothing will ever happen but that's not really for me to be concerned about my only concern beyond moving on is is to move on in a healthy way so that just is always disturbing to me when i hear stuff like this because i'm like oh do we have to go here does it have to be that you know what i'm saying so y'all let me know what y'all think in the in the comment section down below uh kudos for candace to candace for being like i'm not getting involved in that because it's there's no good that can come of that it's just not it's just not at all um let's talk a little bit about sonia richards ross and what she's having to say about the real housewives of atlanta so i didn't listen to this entire interview mostly because of you know time constraints and i'm trying to get some other things done but i did look at this clip and it was really enough for me to react to so basically she's saying in this clip, you know, she's talking to Teddy from the Two T's in a Pod podcast, you know, once upon a time in Atlanta, you know, Atlanta, actually, let me just give you guys a little bit of it. I'm not going to um, play the audio. I'll just sort of give you guys what she is saying here in this clip. Give me one second to modify and then I'll put let the words, the words are on the screen. So she says, once upon a time, there were women who were all friends, okay, who were in this Atlanta circle who were on the show. And then that dynamic changed. As we are trying to build these authentic friendships, the fans don't really want to give us the time to do that. They want to feel like y'all been friends for 20 years. So let me stop it right there. And I think she just basically hit the nail on the head with the problem with Atlanta that and she did it in such a succinct way. And it's interesting that she too understands the problem, but she wants something different, right? Because obviously she's on this, she's got a job now. She wants, you know, to be able to, you know, I'm sure make this thing last. However, the problem is, as she did outline, is that, you know, once upon a time, these were a group of friends. And now there is no longer the group of friends, period. And so the acknowledgement is that, yes, we, the fans, want an organic group of friends because that is the show that we have that we were sold. OK, that's the show that we were sold and that's the show that we were sold on. OK, so when you look at this show now and you're saying to, that you're going to be putting these strangers together, this is not the real world. OK, seven strangers go into a house to see what happens. OK, can, can they work and they live together? If I wanted to watch seven strangers coming together, then I would go and watch the real world. I'm watching Housewives, which, again, as we talked about, as she stated, is about a group of friends. Friends. I do not want to watch a group of associates because otherwise the relationships, they mean nothing. So when there's drama, it absolutely means nothing. And even if you are just getting to know these people, it means absolutely nothing when there's drama because we're not connected to you nor to the drama that you are bringing. I don't if I wanted to see new relationships being built, there are so many other shows that we could do that. Right. Um, love is blind. I mean, I can go and watch some strangers fall in love, but I don't I don't need to see that on my housewives. That's not the premise that I was sold. I want to see a group of friends. OK. Um, and she then goes on to say, pick a side immediately, because basically she's saying they want us to come on the show, already have friendships and then be able to pick a side. OK. She says when it's just not the reality of the show anymore. And again, that is the problem. That is the reality of the show. And that is the reality of the problem. All right. Um, she says the show no longer has six women who are from Atlanta, who grew up together, who ran in the same circles. It's just not that. Baby, uh, is there is are there producers watching? I mean, it, like because this is literally it. She's literally describing the the nucleus for all of the Atlantis issues in one interview clip. And so she says, and the network has a tough decision. Are they going to reboot the show and find six women who are great friends in this community, or are they going to continue to give us time to develop these friendships? 
I think the time has passed, okay? We've given you all two, three seasons to make this work, and it hasn't worked. So let's get back to basics. I think we need to get back to basics. And I think that needs to be the the the, the thing. You know, if you're going to keep Sheree, Kenya, and Candy, you know, bring on, have them bring on an exciting friend each with, an, with, with two new additions who are great friends, and let's see what happens. Give them eight uh, peaches for the first time and have them all be able to really dive into their personal lives and personal stories. You know, do these women also come with additional things, right? Do they come with a complicated family, you know, a funny family, interesting dynamics, you know, money, wealth, success, you know, all of those things. And I don't need for them to be names. I just need them to be amazing characters. All right. So I just wanted to touch on that because I thought it was such an interesting clip to put out. You know what I'm saying? Because it really is describing the problems that we've had with Atlanta all these past, what, two seasons. All right. So anyway, that's the tea for now. I'm going to let you guys go. Enjoy your Sunday and I will catch you in the next video.